Hey everybody, Shavin' Nobody Else's Auto. Got something super, super cool to share with you tonight. New piece for our personal collection. Yes, I'm not gonna sell this. We've been after one of these for way too long. My daughter and I love these bikes. We finally, finally, finally got one. And it's a very highly original, fairly well optioned bike. So that's why I'm so excited. This is such a great piece. These things are so collectible. And to come up with one of this caliber, I'm pretty excited about it. Obviously, a lot of you have been on here before. You've heard of the crates, the muscle bikes, the Schwinn crate bikes made from 68 to 73, I believe. Several different variations of them. You know, the orange one, the yellow one, the green, the white, the gray, you know, the lemon peeler, the apple crate being red, and, you know, all the names correlated with the colors. These things were designed to kind of emulate drag cars. You know, big rear slick on the back, small front tire, thing like that sporty cool something a kid would want to ride in fact they actually schwinn actually used a, a drag car in one of their ads had one of these bikes sitting next to a drag car because that's what kids liked and that's what they wanted their bikes to look like so kids would get excited about them and ride them now to do that these bikes got fairly pricey to look that cool especially with you put, when you put some accessories on them back in the day so because of that you don't see a lot of them today. These things were really up there on the price chain for bicycles back in the day. Schwinn made a ton of different bikes and uh, this was kind of the top dog and that's why they're so hard to find today because a lot of people didn't splurge for that bike at that time because they were so expensive. They were cool, but they were expensive. The one we've got right here is a pea picker, a Schwinn pea picker. So many cool things about this crate series of bikes plus a lot of cool things about this one in specific so we'll just kind of start off overall and look at the actual shape and design of this now i think this bike is completely original except the tires i think the tires have probably been replaced but we see on the back this is uh, just would be like a reproduction of the original tire actually is a slick type bike says schwinn stingray slick right on it and that's how they came the earlier ones actually had a color coordinated stripe on the rear tire to match the bike this one's a 1972 model by then they said this they had the stingray slick on them we see on the front it's got a small front tire on it like a drag car would have big slick on the back small skinny on the front that's what they were looking for which gives this bike kind of a different look but they were also kind of trying to blend the motorcycle craze in with it as well big old ape hanger type handlebars but what really made these things cool, what really gave them the performance image, they were a five speed. They came with their own shifter to shift gears. That's factory, original, just the way it should be. So banana seat, had the big S on it. Now, some other interesting features about these bikes in general, before we get into all the cool stuff about this one specific, these actually had kind of a shock loaded rear seat mount. They were a Springer front end. So a ton of cool features that really made these bikes awesome. That, like I said, that also made them expensive and a lot of people couldn't or didn't want to afford them at the time. Now, like I said, this model is a 1972. In 1972, the minimum wage was about $1.60 an hour. Your medium average family income was a little over 13,000. So you've got to remember an average family's bringing home you know, roughly a little over a thousand bucks a month. So when you break that down, you know, if you divide, you know, 1200 bucks by four, each family, your, your or an average family is probably bringing home 300 bucks a month, $300 a week, you know, on an average paycheck. So when you look at what people were making on an average, you know, $7 and something an hour, probably this bike, the basic bike, a actual, what they called the crate series, a pea picker or a lemon peeler or an apple crate or an orange crate, any of those. Uh, this bike base price was $113.95 in 72. So this thing was almost a half a week's worth of salary just for the basic bike to buy it new, to kind of put it into perspective. You know, you could buy a pretty good used car for six or 800 bucks. Uh, you know, new cars were four or $5,000. So when you put it into perspective, $113.95, you know, $113 that actually could buy you a cheap used car that you could drive at that point. And the, this basic bike was $113.95. Now this particular bike is pretty special. We, didn't, we just bought this bike and I didn't even realize that I started doing some research on it. 
But this is actually a very, very desirable series of the crate and a very rare one. This being a 1972, they made these bikes up through 73, but this is a 1972. 1972 was the last year for the pea picker, the green one. However, it was the first year for a very, very nice option that they had available on these bikes. And we'll turn it around here so we can check it out. 72 was the first year you could get a factory Schwinn disc brake on the rear of these bikes. Yes, this actually has a caliper type piece here. It actually has a rotor here and this clamps on it. It is a true disc brake. So this is a 1972 P picker with disc brakes or disc rear brake, which makes this bike very hard to find and very desirable. Now, what else is cool about this bike? Like I said, other than that, I think the tires have been replaced. This bike is completely original. Is it perfect? No, because it's original, it's 50 years old. So let's take a look at it. We'll start up here at the top. We've got the original Schwinn seat. We've got the Schwinn Stingray tag on the back. Now the seat, it's got some fading on it. It's been ridden. It's got a couple little cracks here. It's got a tear over here. Right down over here on this side, we've got actually got a tear in the seat. But the bike's 50 years old, so, but it's original, so I'm not going to worry about it. Original grips, original Schwinn grips, original Schwinn pedals. All this paint appears to be original. It's got some scratches and some scuffs, yes, but it's a 50-year-old bicycle. But everything on this thing looks so highly original. I'm just so excited about it. So what are some of the other things that make this bike special? This bike actually had some accessories added to it. This bike actually has a headlight up here on the front. And with that headlight, it also had over here on this side above our disc brake, it had a taillight, but the taillight's damaged. The taillight was right here. But it also had, this is a generator to run the lights. This was an actual Schwinn accessory for this generator and the taillight and the headlight to have. The other thing that's kind of cool about this, actual original Schwinn Stingray speedometer. So this bike actually, it didn't have all the accessories, but it actually had some accessories on it as well. Now, something else that is a little bit, that probably you've probably noticed as we've looked at this, is this bike has a license plate on it. CC Tex bike with a bike number on it. So this must have come, I'm assuming this came from Texas. We're going to find out here in just a minute because let's check out something else. Down here, we actually have the dealer sticker on the fork. Right here, we've got the original Schwinn Quality Chicago sticker. And then we've actually got this dealer sticker here from the bicycle shop where this was sold at, brand new. Now, down at the bottom of that, it says Corpus Christi, Texas. From Cutler's Schwinn, Corpus Christi, Texas. So I'm going to assume this CC Tex is Corpus Christi, Texas license plate. And that might be the original plate for this bike. Obviously, we've still got the dealer sticker on here. It is a Schwinn dealer sticker. So I would assume that's all correct. So we've already checked this thing out. We've looked the bike over. We've showed you where it's got a few flaws. We've also showed you how highly original it is. Now, on these crate bikes, originality is so, so, so critical. You can order a lot of these parts reproduction. You can get a frame. You can repaint it in any color you want. You can get the sticker kit, whether it's pea picker, lemon peeler, apple crate, whatever you want, and make one of these. That's why it is so critical for these bikes, for these crate bikes, to be original. And that way, the, you can document the whole bike that it is a legitimate, actual, original crate bike. And now, why is that a big deal? These bikes have gotten extremely valuable, extremely valuable. Uh, I've seen these bikes bring well over 10,000 bucks a piece before. Now, is this one of those? No, it's not. You know, that's kind of the rarest of the rare, the top dog, the top dog. But they're still hard to find. They're still desirable, and they're still cool. Hopefully, one of these days, we'll be able to add some of the other ones to our collection. But for right now, I'm super stoked to have this pea picker in our collection because it is such a great piece. Now, we've checked out the originality. We've checked out the accessories. This bike's got one more secret uh, that really ties its story together. And this is something that makes this bike so epic. I mean, it's a great piece in such original condition. This bike actually is almost next level. Now, this is a bicycle. These were used up, thrown away, forgotten about, nobody cared. This bike actually still has its original owner's manual. Schwinn Stingray Bicycles Owner's Manual. This was Jack Jr.'s bike, apparently. Five-speed models. 
Now, how do we know this all ties together? Well, if we open the front cover here, Cutler's Schwinn Cyclery, December 15th, 1972, VIN number KH019418, and we can come down here, and if we can see it, KH019418. So it matches right here on the fork with our owner's manual. So this is literally the original owner's manual that was sold brand new with this pea picker, December 15th of 1972. So this bike has an awesome story, awesome documentation, so many cool things in the owner's manual, all your basics, how the gears work with your five-speed shifter, Talks about the shock absorbing fork and the shock, shock absorbing struts on the rear. Here it talks about the disc brake, which as we just talked about was a new for 72 piece. Schwinn bicycle lubrication and maintenance, bicycle wax, bike polish. Just all of the basic information about your Schwinn bicycle. Now, something else that's kind of cool, check this out, Schwinn accessories. Obviously, like we talked about, there's the headlight. Schwinn Sport Light, complete generator set includes headlight, taillight, and generator, $6.75. So realistically, that was like another hour's worth of wages, you know, for your average person to buy just that one accessory. Now, we also have the, the actual speedometer, the Deluxe Stingray speedometer. That was $8.49. So when you add that on there, you know, you're tacking on another 15 bucks. So that puts that bike at 130 plus tax. That bike was almost $150 out the door, but with these accessories, that was literally, for your average median household income in 1972, that was a half a week's worth of wages for a bicycle. And when, you remember, and when you factor in that minimum wage in 72 was around $1.60 and the speedometer was an $8.49 option. So $8.49 today doesn't sound like much. When you put it into perspective of where things were at in 1972, it uh, really kind of makes it sink in as to these were very expensive bikes. They were very cool bikes. A lot of kids wanted them, but they were so expensive that you know a lot of them you know, couldn't swing it. But Schwinn had such a wide variety that they had they had bicycles for every price point. But you know this was kind of the the king of uh, of the cool bikes in the late '60s and early '70s, and that's why today, even in today's world, why they're so collectible and they're so cool. You know we see a lot of these come up at auctions and things like that. But this one, this is the first time we've really had an opportunity to buy one of this caliber. There's a few of them we've looked at over the years, never anything of this caliber, other than I've seen some at auction that were like almost perfect that we're just insane money. Um, so super excited to add this to the collection. It's a beautiful piece. It is definitely a keeper. We've been after one of these for a really long time. My daughter and I have always admired these bikes, always had a goal of adding one, at least one to the collection. Hey, maybe one of these days we'll stumble across an apple crate or an orange crate or a lemon peeler, something to go with it. Just, uh, you know, if you got one laying around, you want to sell it, let me know because we'd like to have some more. But for now, I'm pretty excited about this pea picker. So anyway, how does it ride? Let's go find out. Let's get her outside. We've checked it out. We've looked at it. We've looked her over. We've got a good look at it. Let's go take it for a spin. We took her out for a spin, rides pretty well. Actually, this is the very first time I've ever had the opportunity to actually ride one of these bikes. So it definitely feels a little bit different with the shock back here on the seat and the Springer type front end, but still a pretty neat experience. Uh, one thing that really kind of shocked me is uh, this thing is actually very difficult to wheelie. 
I mean, these things were so cool and they were a hot rod type bike designed after dragsters and motorcycles. Very difficult to wheelie. I tried all kinds of different things and I, you know, I tried putting, positioning myself at different spots on the seat, even sitting up on the rail. This thing either will come up just a little bit or she comes all the way up on you. So as you just saw, so some of these, you know, it's super, super tricky to ride a wheelie with this thing. But hey, like I said, I've never ridden one of these. I'm sure there's some geometry to it. I'm sure when kids had these things back in the 60s and 70s, I'm sure they figured it out pretty quick. Probably going to take me a little while. But hey, we got it up a little bit. I couldn't do a, a video on a crate muscle bike without at least attempting to do a wheelie. So we did some. But like I said, brakes need adjusted. I'm sure the chain is going to need lube and a little a few other tweaks and adjustments. But overall, really great bike that we're really excited to have in our collection. Like I said, we've been chasing one of these for a long time. Hopefully one of these days, maybe we'll add an apple crate or an orange crate or a lemon peeler or some of the other few to the collection. But for right now, super happy with this pea picker, super happy with the originality of it. And the fact that this thing comes with its, an, with its original owner's manual for this exact bike with the correct serial number written in it and dated from 1972 with the cycle, this Cutler's, Cutters Schwinn Cyclery, which matches the dealer sticker on the, on the bike. So definitely not something you come across every day to find one of these bikes in this original condition with the book. Super excited about it. Like I said, disc brake, 1972 P picker. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm pretty jacked to have this in the collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Super neat piece. I love the thing. I love the way it rides. I just got to learn how to do a better wheelie with it. So maybe we'll do that one of these days and bring you another video. But anyway, for now, that's what we've got. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this stuff, you like old cars, you like old trucks, you like memorabilia, be sure to check out the channel, Nobody Show. Hit that subscribe button and definitely click that notification button because we do a lot of cool live stuff on here as well. That's what we've got for tonight. New edition of my collection, the 1972 Schwinn P-Picker with disc brake and original owner's manual. Great piece. Glad to have it. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Stay tuned. We got a lot more stuff, come, cool stuff coming up. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you soon on the next video.